Before proceeding to run the Monte Carlo simulation, there is something to understand from this particular workbook regarding the columns where risk frequencies and severities are stored, columns G and L respectively. Take for example cell G2, which contains the following formula. This formula has been copied down for all frequencies in column G and for all severities in column L. It uses a custom function, eval, that allows to evaluate the syntactic content of DT simulator custom functions. I explain myself better by substituting this formula. Delete cell G2 and replace it with the function equals DT Bernoulli open parenthesis E2 close parenthesis. This function is part of the distribution functions that have been created as custom ones to operate the Monte Carlo simulation. We know that a Bernoulli requires only one parameter p. It helps us to remember that the fact that the only cell E2 is colored for the first parameter of Bernoulli function and it is a single parameter. As you can see, we can use these custom functions like any other function in Excel. After the equal sign, type dt, then the function name, parentheses, and then the parameters separated by commas or semicolons depending on your location, culminating in closing the parentheses. DT Simulator has defined so far 13 distribution functions. According to our experience in risk consulting, these are the most commonly used. The same work can be done on the severity in cell L2. Delete the function in this cell and replace it with equals DT Uniform open parenthesis I2 comma j2 close parenthesis. This is the uniform severity function that requires two parameters, a minimum and a maximum value correspondingly referred from cells i2 and j2. Either you leave the functions as they were with the generic eval function or that uses each of the respective functions with the parameters one by one, the Monte Carlo simulation process will do its job in the same way, generating numbers along the distribution curves according to the functions that we have defined for each cell, frequency or severity. The eval function will only work in the context of this particular model as it considers the relative positions of the name of each distribution and its required parameters. On the other hand, the use of DT functions allow creating any type of simulation models as we will see in another course. Each time the frequency and severity functions that we have created for these 20 risks are recalculated, random numbers are generated along the respective curves. The multiplication of frequency and severity is stored in column M. The values that are shown in these cells at any moment are not from the simulation point of view, very relevant. They represent only one iteration or recalculation of the hundreds or thousands that will be generated in the full Monte Carlo simulation. Note that the sum value of all these risks is collected in cell D2 of total risks in the categories sheets, outputs. When the values are recalculated with a new iteration, they are shown generated once more. The other risk categories on the output sheet show the sums of the risks by category according to the group to which each risk has been assigned in the model in column M. For example, risks 4, 12, 15 are added in each iteration in cell D5 of total environmental risks. Now, navigate to the sheet params and select the number of iterations you want to generate in the simulation in cell C2, or simply click on the parameters icon on the DT simulator ribbon. Again, the iterations are the recalculations that will be generated during the simulation. These are stored in an attached sheet called data. Select 1000 iterations and click to run simulation. This is the maximum number of iterations allowed in the student version of this workbook. During this process, the model performs the following steps a thousand times. One, generate a random distribution for each frequency of each risk line according to assigned distribution respectively. Two, generate a random distribution for each severity of each risk line according to the assigned distribution respectively. Three, 
multiply the frequency by the severity for each rest line. It identifies each of these multiplications as an input variable. Since there are 20 risks multiplied, the model will contain 20 input variables. 4. Add each risk to its respective category and add all risks together to the total risk line. Since there are 6 risk categories and a total category, the model will contain 7 output variables. 5. Store all this information in the data sheet. Based on the storage of 10,000 simulated records in data, the graphical analyses are generated. By correctly understanding the origin in random numbers that this whole process has, it is easy to deduce that the results of 100, 1000, 5000, 10,000, or any number of iterations could be different for each session in which the simulation is run. Not only the number of iterations or recalculations could vary, but also, based on the random function of Excel, it is not possible to set the seed that is, the first random number from which the random numbers are generated, which, if could be done, would guarantee exactly the same sequence of random numbers each time a simulation of the same number of iterations is run. Hence, the numbers that are presented here for interpretation in the analysis graphs vary somewhat between those that I present and those that you will generate on your own computer. Let us remember that the greater the number of iterations carried out in the simulation, the more the calculated statistics will get closer to the theoretically correct ones. The technical term used is convergence. As the iterations grow, the model converges towards the theoretically correct answers in an incrementally decreasing fashion. That is why I simulated 10,000 iterations in my model, which will take about 10 times longer to generate than just 1,000 iterations. In the student version of the model, only a maximum of 1,000 iterations can be generated. With more time, and in the professional version, you can also generate as much as 50,000 iterations to compare your generated numbers with the ones that I have simulated on this occasion. In any case, you can verify that the responses of the model generated with either 1,000 or 10,000 iterations will tend to approximate, especially on the averages calculated for the input and output variables. Thank you.